So you finally upgraded that old carburetor and replaced it with a Sniper EFI system. So what's next? You're probably wondering, how do I get the most out of my Sniper EFI system and what components should I upgrade? That's where Sniper's HyperSpark Ignition System can help you. Not only will it give you complete control of your ignition timing, adding a HyperSpark Ignition box, coil, and distributor to your Sniper EFI system can help stabilize engine idle, improve throttle response as well as fuel consumption, and you might even gain a little horsepower. Installation is simple and straightforward, but some people still get a little confused when it comes to phasing their distributor. So I'll walk you through that, as well as show you how to wire the HyperSpark ignition box and coil in your vehicle. And depending on your particular vehicle, the complete HyperSpark ignition system can be installed and up and running in less than an hour or two. I've got the perfect candidate right here, so let's go ahead and get started. For safety, the first thing you need to do is disconnect the battery. Remove the wires from both the positive and negative terminals of your coil. It's a good idea to wrap the terminals with some electric tape to prevent arcing. We need to find top dead center on the number one cylinder. So you'll have to remove the spark plug wire as well as the spark plug in the number one cylinder. When you're doing this, it's critical that you verify you're on the compression stroke. There's several ways of doing this, including the old finger of the spark plug hole trick, or more technical tools like this whistle. With the appropriate wrench, rotate the crankshaft in the direction of normal engine rotation. Once you feel or hear the air being pushed out of the cylinder, you should be close to top dead center. Stop and check the timing mark at the balancer, then slowly rotate the engine until you're at top dead center or the zero degree mark. If you went past the zero mark, you'll have to rotate the engine almost two complete revolutions in order to get back to top dead center on the compression stroke. Top dead center occurs twice in a four stroke engine, once on the compression stroke and once on the exhaust stroke. Verify that you're on the compression stroke. One good way to do this is by looking at the rotor position. When the number one cylinder is at top dead center on the compression stroke, your rotor should be pointed near the number one plug wire terminal on the distributor cap. If it's not, turn the engine over until the rotor has rotated 180 degrees and you can once again feel air being pushed out of the cylinder. Then verify your timing is set to zero on the balancer. Mark and remove all the spark plug wires from the distributor cap. Don't forget to disconnect any wiring or vacuum hoses from the distributor as well. I like to use some compressed air or even a wire brush to remove the debris around the distributor before we remove it. Loosen and remove the distributor hold down. Lift the distributor upward to remove it. Note the direction and rotation of the position of the rotor as you lift the distributor out of the engine. This rotation is due to the helical cut gears and you'll need to take this into consideration when installing the new distributor. If your particular distributor came with a gasket, you can install it now. Using a little bit of adhesive to help hold it in place sometimes helps. In our case, the Ford's use an O-ring, so just make sure that the O-ring is there and you can apply a small amount of motor oil to the O-ring itself. This will help prevent damage in it as we install the distributor. Coat the gear with motor oil if your engine has already been broken in and you'll be starting the engine immediately after distributor install. If the engine is new or you're gonna let it sit a while before it gets fired, coat the distributor gear with Molly paste or camshaft break-in lube. Remove the cap from the HyperSpark distributor. Remember how the rotor rotated as we removed it? Position the rotor so that when it drops down and meshes with the cam gear, it's pointing towards the number one spark plug wire. If the rotor doesn't land in the desired position, lift the distributor up and back it up a tooth, then reinstall until you're satisfied with the rotor location. Make sure that your distributor is fully seated on the engine or intake. If it's not, on some engines you may need to rotate the oil pump shaft to allow for proper alignment. An oil priming tool or a long screwdriver should usually do the trick. Next, we need to position and align our installation tool that came with our distributor. It looks a lot like a clear distributor cap. You also need to make sure that your cap matches your distributor rotation, either clockwise or counterclockwise like this one is. Position the cap over the rotor, then rotate the base of the distributor housing until the cap drops down, locking it into place on the distributor base. 
This process is known as phasing the distributor. Reinstall and tighten down the distributor hold down bracket to finish the installation. Once our distributor phasing process is complete, the rotor will now be pointed in the vicinity of the number one spark plug wire terminal once we install the distributor cap. The installation cap has a little tab or notch that indicates the position of the number one spark plug terminal. Pull the housing off and mark it with a sharpie. Now we're ready to install the HyperSpark distributor cap. Reinstall your number one spark plug as well as the spark plug wire. Then attach the opposite end of the plug wire to the terminal right above the mark we made on the distributor base earlier. Then install the rest of your plug wires based on the engine's firing order and rotor rotation. Spark plug wires are a critical part of your vehicle's ignition system. Helical wound suppression type wires and proper routing are critical to your vehicle's performance. Never use solid core wires with any of our Holly or Sniper EFI systems. Next you'll need to grab the three pin wiring harness that came with your HyperSpark distributor. Attach this harness to the corresponding connector coming from the distributor. Plug the two pin connector containing the purple and green wires into the corresponding connector found on the Sniper EFI harness. These connectors are keyed and the purple and green wires will match up to each other. Next, connect the pink wire found in the three pin harness to a clean switch 12 volt ignition source. I'll be using the same one that I used for the ignition box as well as the coil. Now we're ready to install the HyperSpark ignition box. It can be mounted in most any position, but avoid mounting it with the connector in the vertical position or upwards like this. Any moisture that would get in there is trapped and not allowed to drain out. The ignition box can be mounted in the passenger compartment or even the engine bay, as long as it's away from high heat areas and you avoid confined spaces like the glove box. The included template will make fabricating a mounting bracket a lot easier. Wiring the ignition box is pretty straightforward, but to make it even easier, I'm gonna show you over here on the bench. The main harness simply plugs into the ignition box and you'll connect the heavy red and black wires directly to your vehicle's battery, nowhere else. The smaller connector gets connected to the red and white wire. The red wire goes directly to a clean 12 volt switch source. The white wire will get connected directly to your points output that comes from the Sniper EFI unit or the electronic ignition amplifier output. The white points output wire can be found in pin F in the 10 pin auxiliary harness connector that will connect directly to the Sniper EFI throttle body. The last two wires in our harness are for the ignition coil. HyperSpark will work with most aftermarket as well as stock coils, but we recommend the HyperSpark coil itself. If you're using our coil, the TFI connector will plug directly into the coil. If you want to keep your engine bay looking stock or you're using a coil like this, simply cut off the TFI connector from the harness and install a pair of ring terminals. The orange wire gets connected to the positive side of the coil and the black wire will go to the negative side of the coil. To prevent radio frequency interference, or better known as RFI, these should be the only wires connected to your vehicle's coil. Once you've made all your connections and you've permanently mounted the ignition box as well as the coil, go ahead and route all the wires away from any high heat sources and wrap them to protect them from any abrasion. Since we wanted to keep the stock look, I mounted the ignition box in the cabin area and I'm also gonna retain the stock coil. So I ran the coil wires from the harness on the ignition box back into the engine bay and to the coil. Remember, connect the black wire to the negative side of the coil and the orange wire to the positive side of the coil and nothing else gets connected here. And when you're finished, go ahead and put the coil wire on the distributor cap. All that's left to do now is run the Sniper EFI Wizard using our handheld and set the parameters to allow timing control. But first, we need to reconnect our battery. Whenever you're performing upgrades to the Sniper EFI system, you should always make sure that the handheld as well as the ECU are up to date and compatible with the HyperSpark ignition. To do this, turn the key to the run position, but do not start the engine. Select the files icon from the home screen, then the ECU HW slash FW. Minimum version to run HyperSpark ignition is 1.1.1. 
As you can see here, we've got the 1.1.17, so we're good. We also need to check the handheld's firmware. Do this by selecting the local setup, then local info. Minimum for the handheld is 1.1.7, and we exceed that as well, so we're good to go. So we can go back to the home screen. We're now ready to run the Sniper Wizard. From the home screen, select the Wizards icon, then choose your throttle body type from the options listed. We've got the 4 injector 4150, so I'll just select next. This is a V8 engine, so I'll select 8, then next, and you need to type in the engine displacement. You can either use the slider or manually enter it. We have a 289 cubic inch Ford, click save, then next. Now we need to select the target idle speed. I'm going to shoot for 750 RPMs. Click save, then next. Now you need to select your cam type. We have a stock cam, so we'll select stock, then next, and we are not running any power adders whatsoever. Here's where you need to pay attention. Even though we have a negative type coil, we are running the HyperSpark distributor and ignition box, so we need to select the HyperSpark option. Click next. Since we're doing timing control, it's going to want to know what our wide open throttle ignition timing is going to be max. I'm going to put in 34 degrees total, click save, then next, and it's going to start a calibration. By clicking start, it'll upload the calibration to the ECU and ask you to cycle ignition off, then back on to complete the operation. As you do this, you should hear the fuel pump come on for about five seconds, and we're ready to go. Now all we have left to do is start the engine and verify our timing. So from the home screen, select the tuning icon, system icon, then static timing. I'm going to choose 15 degrees, so we'll click save and set. This locks our timing at 15 degrees so we can go out with the timing light and double check it at the harmonic balancer. It's hard to see, but our timing indicator is right on the 15 degree mark, so we're good to go. If your balancer doesn't have a mark at 15 degrees, or any marks at all, use this equation to determine how far from top dead center your mark should be. If the timing doesn't match up to the 15 degrees we set on the handheld, you'll have to loosen the distributor hold down and rotate the base until it does. Don't forget to retighten the hold down when you're done. Now that we've verified the timing out at the balancer, we need to clear the static timing setting that we set earlier on the handheld, allowing the Sniper ECU to control the timing. If you'd like to custom tailor your own timing curve instead of using the curve that was created by the wizard, you can. Downloading the Sniper EFI software to your laptop allows you to create a custom ignition timing curve for your engine. Once you completed all the steps we just talked about, your HyperSpark ignition system install is now finished. All that's left to do now is go out and drive it and enjoy it. If you'd like to see more how-tos or installation videos, visit our website at holly.com.